Welcome back everyone. In this video, we'll continue our discussion on chapter two, and we're going to talk about bar and pie charts. We will discuss the key characteristics of these chart types and how to construct them. And then finally, since pie charts are frequently misused, we'll briefly talk about some of the common issues. So let's get started. Chapter 2.2 covers two of the most frequently used charts, which are bar and pie charts. Although stem and leaf diagrams are covered in the last learning outcome in this section, we won't be covering it in this video or in this course. The reason is I've never really seen or used this chart in practice. We're gonna focus more on how to display categorical or qualitative data using bar and pie charts. First, let's talk about bar charts. A bar chart is a graphical representation of a categorical data set in which rectangles or bars are drawn over each category or class. The length or height of each bar represents the frequency or percentage of observations or some other measure. Let's take a closer look at this example bar chart. In this chart, I'm displaying the excuses that students have offered up as reasons for being late to class. We can see by the labels on the y-axis some reasons include getting stuck in traffic, not setting their alarm, getting days mixed up, or not having any clean clothes to wear. As you can see, the longest bar is forgetting to set their alarm, which occurred for 26 students. A common question that comes up is the difference between a bar chart and a histogram. We learned in the 2.1 video that histograms are showing the frequency of a numerical value. We are counting occurrences within a range or a bin. Bar charts are really meant for categorical data. So for example, we are counting the number of occurrences for a particular category. As you will see in our next example, a bar chart is not always just showing the count for a category. It can also include some other numerical measure. Therefore, in order to construct a bar chart, we need one qualitative or categorical variable and one numerical or quantitative variable. Let's jump into that example now. Now, to construct our bar chart in step one, we want to define the categories for our variable of interest. So you can see in our example, the different categories are automobile companies. Now, we also need to determine the appropriate measure to display. So in this case, we want to display the number of cars sold in 2015. So we're gonna go ahead and use Excel to develop this bar chart, and then we're gonna interpret the results. Here, we can see that General Motors outsold its competitors, such as Ford and Toyota, in 2015. Next, let's finish up and talk about pie charts. With pie charts, these are typically used to show the parts of a whole. Think of the circle as being divided into slices. Each slice represents a category or class that is displayed. Now the size of each slice is a proportional to the magnitude of the displayed variable for each category or class. So to construct the pie chart, the first thing we wanna do in step one is to define the categories for our variable of interest. So in this example here, our variable of interest is social media platforms. The different categories we have are Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, or other. Now in step two, we want to determine the appropriate measure or value. In this case, this is the percentage of people that are using that platform. Then in step three, we'll use Excel to create the pie chart, and then where each slice represents each category. So pie charts, are sometimes mistakenly used when a bar chart would have been more appropriate. Here's an example. A few years ago, the student leaders at Boise State University wanted to draw attention to the funding inequities among the four public universities in Idaho. To do so, they rented a large billboard which contained a large pie chart like the one you see here. Each slice indicated the funding per student at the given university. For the pie chart to be appropriate, the slices of the pie should represent the parts of a whole. 
Instead, the amounts merely represented the dollars of state money spent per student at each university. So the sum of the four amounts in the pie chart here is meaningless. In this case, a bar chart would have been more appropriate because then you could see which university had higher spending per student than the others. So some other issues I see with pie chart usage is too many categories or slices. So a good rule of thumb to use is around seven categories maximum. Another issue is pie charts encode values in the arc length of each slice. So the human eye can have a hard time reading angles. So let's assume for a moment that this Idaho University pie chart makes sense. So without these data labels here, I bet you would have a hard time telling which university had the higher funding per student. With the bar chart, it would be much easier to see which bar is tallest. Well, that wraps up this video covering bar and pie charts. In the next video, we'll wrap up chapter two and talk about line charts, scatter diagrams, and Pareto charts.